The Wheeled is the bike that everyone should be riding. In the winter, my bum stays dry. In the summer, it's never a bike that holds me back. In the mountains, this over, over a palace every single time because those long corners where it's just and you're holding on and you're just there and enjoying and just, you're just part of the ride. So in return, the Bowman Palace 3 that a lot of you saw and liked, and a lot of questions about another bike in the range, the Wild. So since I'm returning it, I'm gonna take a look at that bike as well. Hi Dave, it's this one back. Um, that's the wheel there at the end, so the black one just there, if you grab that. So this is a brand new wheeled from Bowman Cycles. Let's take a closer look. The Wield is our third generation of an endurance frame, um, but to kind of really understand the Wield, you sort of need to go back to where it came from, really. Um, so let's get back to the original Pilgrims. This is our very first endurance frame, the Pilgrims. And this was developed, this was the second frame we ever did and developed in 2015. 2015, yeah. Developed 2015, came out in 2016. And at the time, endurance stroke mixed surface frames um, were, uh, the, they were a lot smaller, tired than current gravel frames are. Um, and this was, you know, fitted up to a 32C tire, something like that which was great for skilled roadies to ride off-road, but not, didn't really offer the ability that a modern gravel bike would do. This is the history of all of what we've done so far to date from one of the very first prototypes we've done. The prototype road bike is, um, I think my nephew's riding it at the moment. Um, then it goes through the first generations of frames and some of them you've got original prototype, second generation prototype into production and you can kind of, see, so it's just nice to see the differences in cables and changes in geometry across the development process. And then we just go all the way through all the first generation frames, then we jump into second generation Palace R, into the production, the first actual pre-production prototype of the Pilgrim's disc. So you can see there's like, markings on it where cable routings needed to be changed after that. The same sort of things, these two white ones were like real handmade prototypes of the first two Gen 3 frames, a disc rear end and a caliper rear end. And then from there we worked out all of the various cable routing options and tire clearance across different models. And then it goes into the production frames of Gen 3, so Palace in orange sherbet and Midnight Black and then into the Wield and obviously it will go on there in the future. That leads us on to the second generation of Pilgrim's frame set, which was the Pilgrim's disc. Um, this shared a lot of the tubing with the original Palace R, um, but shared the, exactly the same geometry as the Pilgrim's. Um, but it had a much better ride quality. Um, more, uh, we'd moved over to through axles, because the through axle standards had settled down, flat mount discs, all of the things you'd have expected in a, a bike of that era, and that was 2017, 18, something like that. But again, this sat sort of in a, in a strange intermediate position between a, um, a road bike that was endurance focused and something that was designed to be ridden on mixed surfaces. And we started to realise that to get a true gravel bike where the market was and what people were that now doing on drop bar off-road bikes, we would need much bigger, much bigger tyres. So rather than having sort of 40 something mil between the chain stays, you'd need 60, 65. And once you do that, fork lengths need to increase from 375, 380, which you get on an endurance road bike, all the way up to 400, which is a traditional cyclocross fork length. Once you start going there, the bike changes massively as to what it's capable of doing. 
because of the way the market was going, what we 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 realised that we we needed um, to move if we wanted a true um, multi-surface bike. Um, the Pilgrims would need to sort of shunt sideways within a product line into a, a much more true modern gravel bike, um, which is where its development path is currently. But what that means is that this endurance middle of middle of the middle of the road between the performance of the palace and what the pilgrims will end up you need a, a a long distance all day bike which is how in the, the the previous generations of pilgrims morphed more into our current endurance frame which is the wheeled so this is in essence kind of inspiration for pretty much everything everything that's about my cycling it's like i've lived London, Kent, Surrey, but I've kind of lived in this bit of area here of South London for a long, long time. And that whole triangle as it widens out is what the bikes are inspired by and what the names, bikes are named after. You've got Pilgrim's Way across there, you've got Layham's down there, which was the stainless. You've got Crystal Palace, Mitchum Palace there. Foots Cray was over there, it was a cross race bike. Um, that's the Kent wheeled, that kind of ridge across Seven Oaks, so that ridge across there, so drop down into a valley over a big hill here, and then you've got this whole thing deep down into the Ashdown and places like that. But yeah, it's just nice to be surrounded by the things that mean a lot to you and be able to have terms of reference for old stuff and see what you're reminded of. But yeah, this is where it all happens, really. And, um, and obviously downstairs in the workshop is where the spannery stuff goes. So as we started with, the current endurance frame is the wheeled. And the difference is, the, there's the kind of, there's, there's two sides of this. The primary differences between the wheeled and the pilgrims are to do with um, where the saddle ends up um, in a much more similar position to where the, where the palace saddle would end up. So if you have a palace, and the wheel, the seat layback would be identical. And it's much more easy to get the same anatomically correct saddle position on this with the same seat layback and seat height and things like that um, compared to a Pilgrims. So the two road bikes have a very similar rear end. The, the front end is a little different um, just in terms of stack and reach to do with the geometry of um, a an endurance and um, more stable bike. As we went road focused with the wheeled, um, we took a lot of what we'd done on the tubing development with the new Palace disc um, and transferred the rear end across flattened rear stays, a deeper chain stay, and um, albeit slightly longer for the um, larger tyre so it doesn't touch the back of the seat tube. But everything else um, is the is the same as the Palace, so we're getting the same sort of comfort levels as we do on a Palace. If you used a 28 on both, they'd feel pretty much identical. Um, but obviously if you use a 32, it's gonna be a little bit more comfortable. So that's the similarity between our race performance-focused Palace and the wheeled. And the difference comes in the front end of the bike. While the tubing is the same, so you're getting the same sort of character, handling characteristics in terms of steering accuracy, the bottom bracket drops on average um, about five mil lower per size. The head tube gr grows um, in height by about five mil in size. Top tube is between three and five mil shorter across different sizes. And what that does, does in terms of stack and reach, you're, you're generally about 10 mil higher in stack and about five mil shorter in reach. So by Raising, raising the height of the head tube slightly and dropping the bottom bracket slightly, you get the same stack without removing too much weight from the front end. The, the bottom bracket drop as well also gives you a little bit more stability because your, um, your centre of gravity is that just that smidge lower. Um, a little bit of extra stability from a half to a third of a degree different on the head angle. That's, I mean, that's, that's pretty much how our endurance geometry goes rather than we've, we've increased stack and reach, but we haven't just increased it by lifting the whole front end up. We've tried to add a little bit of extra stability. The idea behind having a very much road focused endurance bike was 
Um, we wanted something that could be ridden all day, but still feel sprightly enough that it was enjoyable to ride. It wasn't dull. It very much engaged you because we all spend quite a lot of time on our winter bikes um, and you might as well enjoy riding them and they might as well be engaging. They might as well actually still make you smile. So that's where we went with the wheeled. It's often good to look back and know what you wish you could have done on each one because even with the generation three, you know, by the time they come out and are live, you know, I've been working on those for 18 months and at some point you have to stop and there's a kind of a phrase of don't let perfect stop good. Um, and there's always more you can do in designing and the key is knowing when to stop. Um, and so now when I look at the original Pilgrims versus the wheel, I can see all those things that you put in place along the thing. And the same with the original Palace through Palace R into Palace 3. That's really useful to know what really worked on that, what we wish we could have changed. Um, it's also quite nice to see the kind of colours. That's kind of inspirational. The wheel has definitely been designed to be a much more versatile bike than, than the Palace. There are very few instances where um, this isn't as usable as a Palace at the sportier end. It's, it's only when you're in like full, full race mode where and you want the absolute pinnacle of pin sharp handling, every single body movement will be directly kind of translated and transferred to the bike. Um, you get 95% of that. But yeah, then all of the other end, um, as you go towards long distance, the, the obvious versatility is, you know, it has full fitments for mudguards. So if you want to use it year round, not worrying about the rain or commuting or things like that, mudguards make complete sense. Um, similar for audaxing or bike packing, if that's your thing. It's more versatile because as well as fitting 32s on this, um, you can, I'll just grab this. So that's a 650B with a 38 millimeter tire. Um, the external diameter of the wheel, so you effectively imagine the height of the wheel. This is very similar to something like a 28. So the height of this is gonna be very similar to, sorry, a 23 to 25, depending on the wheel. So you're gonna get, I mean, the bottom bracket drops by maybe five, another five or six mil. So you are gonna be slightly limited in crank clearance. But what you'll have with that is if you're fully laden and you're doing a lot of long distance road stuff, you'll have a huge amount more comfort on a bike with a, you know, it's, it's quite a balloon-like 38C tire. So, you know, you've got the, the versatility of that. Yeah, and, and with the 650B, you know, you've got very, very bumpy roads, extra comfort there if you're, even without being laden or those sort of rides where you just want to play around and nip off over there halfway home or your commute goes across a football pitch or down a canal towpath, that sort of thing. You've, you've got the versatility there. Frame weights are a little strange because paint jobs can, can affect paint frame weights, but this 50 centimetre, 50 centimetre mint frame weighed in at 12.75. A 54 in a black paint job weighed in at 13.20, something like that. So, you know, about 100 grams lighter than the Pilgrim's disc used to be, and within 30 grams of the Palace 3. The only difference in weight between this and the Palace 3 is 25 grams in the fork and maybe five grams on the, on the chainstay length. I like being surrounded by the sort of cycling stuff that I like and enjoy. There's, you know, I've been doing it long enough and it's like, Paolo Bettini's water bottle from Giro in God, 2007, like Ivan Basso's water bottle, Cavs stuff from Orica when I was taking photographs of Guerin, Simon Guerin's winning Liège, Baston Liège, colour tubes. There's actually a number from Tour Flanders I did with you, Dave, many years ago. And then kind of a cap collection, because everyone needs, every cyclist needs a good cap collection. Um, some of them are ours, some of them are just nice designs I've liked and some of them have a lot of sentimental value as well. So, The Wheeled is the bike that everyone should be riding. Most people aren't racing, they don't need a race bike. Most people aren't doing 10 hour gravel epic rides, no matter how much we want to. If we had the access to, we might do, but we don't have that stuff. 
this does so much of the in-between. If you've got one bike, it's this. Because it, it offers you the versatility to do so much more. This with two sets of wheels would be better than a true race bike and a true gravel bike because the gap in between those would be huge. Um, yeah, to me, it's the bike I ride the most, despite having access to lots of, lots of bikes. Uh, but this is the one I ride the most. Um, it feels lovely, it's great. It's, it's often a difficult question as to who's it for. Um, and you just kind of have to decide if you want something that goes from 95% of performance all the way through to long days out and most of the places in between and have the versatility of mudguards in the winter and 650Bs in the summer if you want to go playing around or put some 25s on it and race around with your mates or, you know, you could run a really skinny cyclocross tyre on it, like a 32C cyclocross tyre and do some summer cyclocross racing on it that it wouldn't be as good as a true cyclocross bike but you could get away with it and and, and that's the sort of versatility of of that it's never going to be a true gravel bike it's never going to be a true race bike but what we've tried to do is make it a road focused version of something that spans a bigger portion of that gap in the winter my bum stays dry in the summer it's never a bike that holds me back and with a low bottom bracket and a very slightly slacker handling at the front end, lay it into a corner and hold on, and it just sticks forever. It's so much fun. Palace is like nimble and all the rest of it, but railing long, long corners. In the mountains, this over, over a palace every single time because those long corners where it's just... and you're holding on, and you're just there and enjoying and just... You're just part of the ride. You're not... Yeah, it's just, it, you're definitely part of the, you feel more of the experience because you're just, it's, it's not forcing you to think quite so quickly. So it allows you to just sit back and sit in and enjoy, enjoy it. So that's what, yeah, that's what it means to me. Maybe we've achieved quite a lot in the time we've been going. I've been, I guess I, in my mind, I've been in the bike industry forever. I've been designing bikes for, actually designing bikes for 10 plus years and testing them for 15 years before that and riding them for 35 years before that. So I love cycling. I've raced BMX and mountain bike and cross and track and everything. And I'm just a cyclist and I love doing that. And it's like, I try and get across the fact that cycling is great. And you just, the more people who get into cycling cause it's great, the better. And if we can facilitate that with simple, easy to use bikes, it's, it's job done.